Y'all, y'all ain't done your girl with celebrity. And right now I'm rocking with 2 Bs TV. You know the fucking vibes. And we used to pretty in real life. Yeah, mad back. Oh, yeah. Big up on the set. <laughs>
and raise them way different, make them be more open. And my child should be able to come to me and, and talk to me about anything. Mm -hmm. And it sounds crazy, but I'd rather be the one to be like, don't do that. This ain't good for you. Exactly. Or if you're going to do this, do it with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just to make sure my child is safe. Like growing up, I didn't know babies came from having sex. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, I thought they came from the sky because that's what I was told. You know what I'm saying? Or like Santa Claus and stuff like that. Like, I don't want my kids to grow up like that. I want them to learn that you people have sex, you know what I'm saying? And stay away from certain things, especially if you're not at an appropriate age. Or if you're going to try it, which most teenagers do as they get older, mm -hmm. you can't stop kids from being a kid. They're going to always be a kid. So the best you could do is just try to direct them the right way and teach them. If you're going to choose to do this, use protection. Exactly. If you're going to choose to do this, do it with me. If you want to smoke at, a, at a, a certain age, come smoke with me. Try it with me so I can show you it's either good for you or it's not good for you. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to I'm going to raise them totally different. I'm going to be so open, an open book. And trust, even then you're going to be grown, have your own kid and your parents are still going to be mm -hmm. in your hand. That's not how you do it. You raising him or her wrong or, you know. Oh, nah. my, well, my mom says stuff like that. I nip, I nip that in the butt quick. Cause you know, <laughs> like we get so used to it now and we're at a certain age that is like, you just don't got time for the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm at that age where I don't have time for the bullshit. Once you say something wrong, it's like, mm. You say something wrong, it's like, nope. Like, so my mom knows now, like, the stuff that she could have told me probably, like, two, three years ago, like, oh, that's not how you do this. It's like, listen, I'm grown. Like, <laughs> I, I know how to do this. I'm grown, that's grown. Not how. That's not how you do it. Exactly. And we teach each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's still things like, I'm teaching my mom, too. Mm. Things that her mother or her when she was younger that she's unlearning herself because she teached me the same shit and now I gotta unlearn it and help her unlearn it too so I'm curious to know because I know when I pursued an entertainment career my mom didn't she wasn't as supportive in the beginning because it wasn't like a real career she'd rather me mm -hmm. something more prestigious how did your family receive you when how, how did your family receive it when you decided to be an artist well, my mom definitely didn't support it, but I've been doing music since I was a little girl. So I used to always go around my community in Jamaica and just be DJing. In Jamaica, we said DJ is like rapping, basically. Just like be rapping for people. And I was never shy, so I was always like just singing for people, which at that time, my mom, you know, I'm a kid, so everybody cheering me up. But as I got older and I'm like, this is what I want to do. I went to school for music and dance. I used to play the violin and um, dancing. In Jamaica and, or here? No, here. I went to high school for violin and dance. Okay. And even at that time, my mom still did. I used to go home with my violin. And you know, the violin is annoying. And she used to be like, Mama, tell you something. Tell the teacher, I said, she not pay my bills at my house. I'm like, but I have to study. Like, I have to study this for tomorrow. She's like, no, no, no. I can't take the nice right now. Just turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> so she wasn't really like, she wasn't supporting me at all. When I first started, she always like, I will play some of my songs like back in the days for her when I first started. And she'll be like, it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. That's the most she was good. Yeah. But it was <laughs> like, yes, my daughter. Oh my God, this song is going to hit. This is the one. This is it. No, my mother always be like, you need to be a doctor. Yeah. Or I used to always talk myself out of things when I was little. So she's like, you need to be a liar. <laughs> gonna be a liar. Like she never or a nurse. That's like, you know, that's like every Jamaican parents, like, go mm -hmm. be a nurse, a doctor, a liar, or a judge. And it was like, yo, like, that's not what I see for me. Exactly. So what was the, when was the moment when she finally fell in line and was like, yes, my baby's a big superstar? Well, when I, um, <clears throat> I used to work in a clothing store called Capital Fashion, right? And I worked there for eight years, nine years. And one day I got up and I just quit my job. And my mother went crazy. When I say she went crazy, she thought I was, she thought she lost me. <laughs> she thought I was going kukuruku. She said she don't know what the music industry did to me. Oh, I was in a different nice. world. Cause you know, quitting your job with nothing. That's not good. I didn't make it yet. 
But I knew deep inside, like, yo, this is the song. So when Walking Trophy, when I first wrote Walking Trophy, I'm like, yo, like, I can't work no more. Like, I don't want to work no more. Like, this is really what I want to do before the song even blew up. And she argued me, she argued me. She told me she don't know what's going on. She called my whole family in Jamaica. That's the thing about Jamaican parents. When you do something, oh, they call everybody, right? <laughs> now, when she started hearing the record on the radio, and my mother don't really listen to the radio, so people was telling her in Philadelphia, like, yo, you have to turn on the radio. Your daughter be on the radio. She was like, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> my first stage show, I said, like, my first show, and then when she see me start doing like big shows like Summer Jam, Broccoli Fest, like all these big shows, she was like, yeah, man, go on with that. I'm a pro day, I'm a pro day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. Like, that's when she was really like, this girl was serious. And my mom tell me to this day, like, like, I'm proud of you. She's proud because she's seen that that was something I wanted and I went for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always tell my friends who are creatives, like when their parents aren't in line, I'll be like, you got to remember where they came from. Yep. They didn't have the luxury to dream and go pursue anything they wanted. Like it was the of the fittest. They had to do what they had to do to make ends meet. Fact. A lot of them was fact. young parents. You know, they had to get it together. That's so a fact. Not that they don't support us. It's just, they don't, they're projecting their own fears onto us. Like they don't want us to fail. They don't want us to basically struggle, especially when they came here to provide a life. That is so true, girl. Yeah. Projecting their own fear on you. And it's mm -hmm. like, what didn't happen for you? That's not my path. That's exactly. your path. Exactly. You know but that's so true. You said the word right there. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. My mother would tell me that all the time. Oh. I'm going to come uh -huh. episode on the podcast whenever you're ready. Yeah, because listen, man, <laughs> the way you're talking, we could be friends because my mother tells me that all the time. It's true. Even with the pandemic, she'd be like, hello? The other day I was talking to her before um the whole election situation, right? Going through that whole situation. She was watching the TV every day and she would call me like, just don't go outside today, please. Whatever you do, don't step oh. foot outside. Keep your car in the garage. Don't drive. I'm like, listen to me. I said, I got to call you back. Right. I got, that's to talk you later, I got things to do. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But that's just not her doing it in a bad way, but she just putting her fear on me. And then the WhatsApp messages don't help. They be like, Ooh, girl. Nation, all type of stuff. I already know. <laughs> I already <laughs> know. <laughs> My mom sent me things on WhatsApp all day. Mm -hmm. The yeah, voice notes, the little stickers, they be going crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good to see that you're still working though throughout the pandemic earlier you said you're still going to the studio and you have a song yeah. with cash doll out how mm -hmm. did that collaboration come about so i met cash doll um hot 97 we was on um, both doing radio radio promo and when i bump into her she was just so cool you know sometimes as artists we see each other and you know artists have this ego mm -hmm. where they'll be like a fan of you or you're a fan of them and they won't say nothing it's more like who's gonna say hi first, who's gonna come to who first. And Cash Doll was really genuine. When I met her, she was super, super genuine. She ran up to me like, yo, hood, I fuck with you. I ran up to her like, yo, I fuck with you. Like, and I feel like the feeling was mutual, the support was mutual. And when I made the record so pretty, I'm like, I need, I need a boss bitch on this record. Mm -hmm. Like a strong, a strong woman who hold her own take care of her own. And I really, she was the first girl that came to mind. And I called my manager. I'm like, yo, I need cash down on the record. And me and her already, like, we support each other on Instagram a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Go through each other's, you know, like, page. Like, I, she, I like her stuff. She like my stuff. We talking in the DMs. And um, we had exchanged numbers that day for the radio promo. And I called her up and I'm like, yo, I got a fire record. I want you to jump on it. And she was like, yo, send it to me. And I sent it to her. She had her verse ready and we just made it happen we flew her to new york shot um shot the video and it was a movie okay that i love yeah. when the organic stories happen like that because there you go it's a lot of camaraderie amongst the female rappers and the female artists that we see today and i love to see it mm -hmm. you know, i like to see you um collaborate with oh. like maybe one of the other caribbean artists like a stefan don or a Shantia. One of them. You know, it's crazy. Me and Ashanti is super, super, super cool. Fuck with Ashanti. We talk a lot, especially on the Instagram. 
we super cool. She support me a lot too. I would definitely love to work with Ashanti, but um, I got a record with Steph London. Where? Yeah, me, Steph London, um, Little Kim. It's Little Kim record. She had me, Steph London, and um, Cranium. It's so much new music that comes out. Sometimes it goes under the rug, but I'm a definitely. Yeah, looking. you could check it out. You could check it out when you get a chance. So, how has COVID affected you and your artistry? A lot of people aren't. You know, they don't have the chance to perform or they don't have the chance to put to promote their songs the way they want to or the way that they can. So what are some ways that you're connecting with your fans? When you say they don't have the chance to um, promote their songs the way they can, right? What you mean? Because a lot of songs say, like I saw someone write on Twitter, mm -hmm. WAP, didn't, WAP didn't really stick the way it could have. If we would have been outside, it would have been different. Like, you know, certain songs in a certain atmosphere, it would just do better. Like if the clubs were- Yeah, open, but WAP, WAP went number one. Yeah, but imagine if outside was open and you just seen everybody in events and it's, it's just a different- Okay, situation. so it's more like, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. It's, like it's more like, a, just, you feel, the, the artists will feel it more. Yeah, you know? Like, you I think WAP did it. super good and I just- I, me personally, I feel like as an artist, I don't think it matters. I think when you're an artist, right? When you're an artist, as in when you're an entertainer, mm -hmm. so not an artist who just, um, you got different type of artists and I respect them all because everyone do stuff different, right? But you got artists that, that are studio artists, like they make great records, just go in the studio and record and put the songs out and that's it. You got um, performers. You got entertainer. You got what I'm saying? When you're an entertainer, mm. it's the whole package. Outside could be open or closed. That shouldn't stop you from touching people and from working. Exactly. It's like, for example, it's like you. Look what you're doing right now. Us. We're on Zoom, right? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? You figured it out. But you got artists that they don't really care to show their personality or they don't have no personality, like I said again, which is okay, but I'm used to touching my fans. So COVID really, COVID slowed the shows, of course, for everyone, can nobody even fake that. But I'm used to touching my fans and I'm used to getting super personal with my fans where I get on the live with them all the time. I answer back to them on comments, if I see their comments. I hit them back in the DM if I'm checking the DMs. You get what I mean? Yeah. Some artists, like, I don't give a fuck how much followers you got, you could see some comments. Yeah, absolutely. You can fucking respond if you want to. And some <laughs> people choose not to. So if you're the artist that choose not to respond to the comments, not to pull up on your fans sometime in the DM, not to get on the, the live and chat with them real quick and y'all kick it, because those are people who support you, then those are the artists that's going to suffer more. Because mm. now the pandemic is forcing you. It's forcing you to be active. Yeah. It's forcing you to communicate. You get what I'm saying? You don't have to force me to communicate with people that support me. That comes supernatural for me. Period. Mm hmm So what about a full-length project? Can your fans expect that anytime soon? Yeah, I'm coming out with my album, which is already done. I'm coming out with my album probably another month or two. But I got the So Pretty record. I got Run the Road right now. I got um my new record that's dropping, Ungrateful which the pandemic showed us a lot of ungrateful people. You know, everybody showed their ass. With, with this pandemic, everybody's been showing their ass. They sure did. They've been showing their ass. These people mm -hmm. been showing their ass. I don't know what's in the air, but listen, <laughs> ungrateful <laughs> is dropping real soon. Probably this, I'll probably drop it this week, coming out with the video. So they can look for that. And my album will be released soon. So they can look for that too. Okay, can they expect any special guest features on there? Well, Cash Doll, we know, is on. Yeah. There. Anyone else? I did a record. I did a dope record with Cranium. That's like super, 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 super dope. Um, I'm going to have a couple features on there because before I didn't really do a lot of features because I wanted my fans in the world to get to know Hood Celebrity, mm -hmm. the real Tina. And I feel like sometimes when you come and you just do features, people... Like, they underlook your talent and your work. Like, oh, she just went number one because she had this person on there. Oh, that shit just went, that shit just got lit because Drake jumped on it. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted people to really see my talent. But for my album, I definitely would have more um, features. Okay, I look forward to it. Thank you. Have you had the chance to watch the versus battles? 
like during the beginning of the pandemic? Yeah, I watched a few. Definitely watched The Bounty and Beanie. Of course, that was the best one. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> a fact. That was the best one. They have yet to match that energy, might I add. But, you know, they did a cover on Billboard mm -hmm. honoring the versus battles. And they left Beanie Man and Bounty Killer off. Mm -hmm. And that, it wasn't surprising to me because reggae, dancehall, the whole, any genre other than hip hop doesn't really get the recognition that it deserves. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I fight for that and I fight to um, spread my culture music and just spread the music in general. But at the end of the day, it's like a person who respect you in private. You know what I mean? Like if you listen to every type of music, I don't give a fuck what kind of music it is. Reggae, dancehall have influenced that genre. Any it's genre of music you could think about and I don't care what it is. You get what I'm saying? So like I said, again, it's like people who respect you in private. You could tell they respect you in private, but they won't show their ass. You know what I'm saying? So it don't matter if they don't give that respect. We will always have that respect because our music is powerful. Do you ever feel like there's a moment that you might have to tone that down in order for your career to elevate more? Nah. I was born in Jamaica. Came to New York when I was 12. So I kind of have both that vibe. Definitely. So I don't feel like, yeah, and I don't feel like I ever have to tone down. My music is therapy. It's therapy for me and it's therapy for the world. So when I do a song and I write a song, I don't think about like, oh, should I make this this type of vibe to tone it down? Like I really write from my heart. Like when I'm in a great mood, I'm walking trophy. Um, when I'm trying to uplift females, like boom, pon it. When I'm in a dancing vibe, daughters cry. When I'm feeling sad, I just want my fans to know what I'm going through. I'm um, so pretty when I'm in that vibe to just uplift women. So my music is always, it's a vibe that I can't ever tone it down because this is what I'm destined to do. Exactly. And on top of that, aside from immigrating from Jamaica, you came to the Bronx, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. New York has a heavy Caribbean influence. And I heard that the Bronx has the best Jamaican restaurants. Can you point me in a direction? I ain't gonna hold. I ain't gonna hold you. Um, it's a few. It's a few restaurants that I went to uptown. Um, it's one called. Damn, it's on two. It's on two twenty third. It's one on two twenty third on um White Plains Road. Mm -hmm. That everybody know. Once you say two twenty third on White Plains Road, everybody know. That. It's another one. It's another one that's called Richie Rich, that I used to always go to. Like I couldn't go uptown without going to Richie Rich. They fried chicken. <laughs> they fried chicken, no lie. It's a line. Just for the fried chicken? Just for the fried chicken. You wait in at least an hour. Okay. I don't know what they put in the fried chicken, but the fried chicken, no matter if I cook that shit at home, <laughs> if my mother cook it, and my mother could cook her ass off. I've never tasted their fried chicken. I don't know if they put fucking milk or butter or whatever the fuck they got going on. Yeah, no. Like sweet and milk. I don't know what they put in the fried chicken. Or sugar, I don't know, but it just doesn't taste like it's not the norm. I got Richie check. Rich. If you come to the Bronx, if you go uptown White Plains Road, you have to go to Richie Rich. I promise you. You're gonna thank me later. That Richie Rich, I'm gonna put that on my agenda. Mm -hmm. Speaking of food, Thanksgiving is on the way. How do you plan to spend the holidays? I think I'm gonna spend this Thanksgiving by myself. Right. Like just the yeah, like the only things I mean, I probably just won't go to like family. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. I was really just thinking with this whole, they sent the whole coronavirus and everything is getting worse and people are getting more sick. I just think I'm gonna just sit this one out. It's the best bet. And to be honest, yeah. the cases probably rose after Halloween, you know, all these mm -hmm. weathers and parties and stuff and things. Yeah, I might make probably one or two, one or two dish and that's it. Just stay my ass home. I wish I could. My mother gonna force me. <laughs> you know what's funny, girl? That's something I would say, like, a couple months ago. I'll tell you, this pandemic really did it for me. Like, I feel like I'm growing. Like, I'm growing every day because nobody just can't force me. My mom would have done some shit like that. Like, oh, yeah, I forgot. come. McCann, she would make it look like it's the biggest thing in the world. She would probably hold a grudge. I'm scared. But like, yo, like, I don't want to go to my mother knowing that my brother's name is out there and my brother's name is outside. You know, these teenagers, they're outside. No mask, they don't protect themselves. 
And it's hard for me to be protecting myself and then we'll go somewhere and then come home to be scared. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh shit, like I gotta steam my face. I gotta make that um garlic with, uh, with ginger and halls and all these stuff. And I'm thinking, I'm a thinker. I don't wanna be thinking like, damn, like <laughs> you start cough, <laughs> your throat start itching, like, oh shit, coronavirus. Like I'm sick. Like, <laughs> I'm a cancer, I could go there. I know myself. So just to have a peace of mind, my mental health, to have my mental health good, I'm gonna sit this Thanksgiving up. Yeah, and cancers are emotional. So definitely follow your heart. Yeah. <laughs> Take me go follow my heart this time. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite Thanksgiving side order? A side dish, per se. Mm -hmm. I know what you meant. Um, I said candy yams. My cousin make the best, best candy yams. Like her candy yams, I don't know what she put in them shits. And I'm the type of person, like I never used to like candy yams. Like I'm the Jamaican where you will show me certain food and I'll be like, ew. <laughs> if it's not like curry goat and rice and peas or, or um, ackee and sawfish, like any other dish you would try to put me onto, like yeah. probably like another culture. Like I'm, I'm a picky eater. So I'll be like, ill. Like ugh. I used to see candy M and be like, ill. But candy M's now is my favorite. Yeah, I love candy M's, especially with the macaroni yeah. and cheese combo. Girl, that's it's a, a movie. Yeah. It's a movie. Yeah. So that's my favorite. Which I think I'm gonna make it for myself this Thanksgiving because my cousin showed me how to make it. So I'll be good. All right. So you set for your thing mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. Send this one out. It's been two years since the release of Walking Trophy. It feels like five for me. I don't know uh -huh. if it feels for you, <laughs> but it feels like way longer than that. What are some things that you learned about the industry, about yourself as an artist in the past two years since releasing that song? Nobody cares. Go harder. Work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. in reality... Nobody cares. You have millions of people out here that's trying to take your spot or that are talented. Nobody cares. Work, go harder. Period. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for any upcoming Caribbean or female artists before we get up out this live? Be yourself. Work hard. Try to step out the box because... It's so much people like I feel like being an artist became the norm. You know, it's, it's weird. Like everybody's an artist now. Like it's nobody weird. wants to be a doctor. Nobody wants to be a nurse. Nobody yes. wants to be a teacher. And those things, we still need those people. You know what I'm saying? Like, and big shout out to the, to the doctors, the teachers, the um, the lawyers. Big shout out to the um, the groomers, the hairstylists, the makeup artists. Big shout out to y'all. The pandemic, like, how essential they are. Yes, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all are appreciated. You don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be a celebrity to be looked at as a person that's successful. But to artists, to female Caribbean artists, like you just said, that are trying um to do music or whatever, I just feel like just be yourself and step out the box. Because if everybody's doing the same thing, then what makes you special? Why do I have to listen to you? Exactly. And like you mm -hmm. said, everyone wants to be an artist and there's a surge of female artists. Not that, and I'm here for it. Not mm -hmm. that I don't like it. I'm here for it. But it's a lot of times that I feel like, are you passionate about this? Or are you trying mm -hmm. to like, quick check? And mm -hmm. a lot of times women are selling sex and it's not their job to be role models to anyone's mm -hmm. children. But yeah. at the end of the day, the music does influence kids. And it's like, do you feel like there's a pressure to sell sex? No, and the female artist. No, because even when I first came out, I've always dressed crop top, got my top on, um, little sweatpants or some like jeans. Like that was just always my swag. My swag was never the self sex. Like if you look at my 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 whole swag, even when I first started, it was never self sex. Right. People never used to know I had a body until I started like really. Right, tighter clothes. Mm -hmm. you. <laughs> it was like, oh shit, that's what she had under them jeans. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I just really just I wear what makes me feel happy and what makes me feel comfortable. That's it. Caribbean. 
Thank you so much. I had a good Thank time you. with you. I feel like I was talking to one of my homegirls. <laughs> Yo, for real, no cap. Like, I'm like, I'm not comfortable right now. Not I'm not comfortable. comfortable. <laughs> great energy, hurt. good vibes. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you so much. And I hope you have a good day. And listen, tune yeah. into the Growing Up Caribbean. I'm going to have you on there. Please, definitely let me know. Tell Ronnie. I got you. To connect Say us. no more. All right, take care, and baby. Before we head out, can you give a shout out to 2Bs TV? Yo, 